In this tutorial we're going to make a tire here and we need to get a thread pattern and this pattern was by Ruben Morals and what I did was use the facet tool here and just kind of copied the image here so what I did was basically click here 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 and clicked here here and double click and validated it I wanted to keep this all quiet so I selected the points here select one here shift click that one and connect select this point up here shift click here and connect and that gave it all quads and that's the pattern I wanted so we'll go ahead and delete this one since I already got the pattern down here as the top image up here it's in perspective view so uh, a lot of these edges are not straight up and down and like on the side right here sometimes when I copy them they'll kind of look like this so for me to fix it since the uh, I'm on the X value here all I need is go up to the size up here empty it out hit the inner key and it straightens it straight up and down and uh, all I did is copy one side and mirror them over to the other side so I didn't have to actually do each one all right I'm gonna be pausing the video in and out of this uh, sessions to speed things up so let's move into the next section all right you can see I added some edges in the middle what I did was cut this in half and mirrored it so I can make sure my cemetery is working good and we'll get that here in a second and I also traced it in orthographic view it's in perspective now if you click it it's in ortho orthographic view this little icon down here sometimes you gotta click it twice and I also straighten up the top line up here so so I'll select one of the items over here control A and we'll go to surface modeling and press weld and now we have one object Let's drag this down here and we're going to go ahead and scale this down here. I'm using this white cross here in the center of this grid as a reference. As you can see this object here position is 000, 000, 000, 000. We're going to go into a side view here. We're going to use the line tool then we're going to use the circle from center and select somewhere here in the center or try to and we're going to drag out and you can see the points here um, the more points the tighter the pattern the less points the further away the pattern you understand that here in a second so let's validate that let's go into the front view again as you can see the circle is not centered so what I do is just drag in here hit the backspace press enter key it zeroes itself out do the same over here backspace enter key then for here just type in 50 press enter and it puts 50,000 alright it looks like these uh, objects selected but if you look down here the, it's actually the uh, circle curve is selected so let's make sure the object is selected first and we're going to use copy on support and if the clone is not on make sure it's on so the, when it's blue like that it's on then we're going to go ahead and select the circle. Alright, we're going to go ahead and validate that. <clears throat> and anything that I do with this object, the center object, which is the clone one, will happen to the rest of the object around the uh, copy on support one that's going all the way around it. So let's go ahead and uh, select face mode. Control A, press the control key down, and we're going to drag out. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's kind of flip kind of backwards the way I'm doing it, so let me just turn this thing around a little bit. And I'm going to turn on the cemetery. I'm going to select one of the edges. And we're going to pull out. Let's save this one as number two. All 
All right, we're going to select the curve here. We'll pull out. Use the snap line. We'll select it here. And we'll go ahead and control C, control V. Here's the command viewer up here. If you wonder what's going on, then you can see up here. And we'll do the same for this side here. We'll go ahead and hide that whole group. And we'll go over to the ruled surface and select here. Here and validate that. And we're starting to get a little pattern here. Let's save this as number three. All right, let's unhide this one here. And let's go ahead and uh, select the faces on this one here. shift key down and just dragging selection convert to edges and I want to deselect these center edges here so I just have the outline pause the video and finish this up as you can see I got an outline pattern I will use the chamfer and we'll go ahead and set this somewhere and validate that as you can see we got chamfer on this one here on the whole group we'll just select that one and select the group here and we'll give it some subdivision be very careful there's a lot going on here and uh, could cause the program to crash now we are starting to get a pattern here and uh, let me set that back down to uh, down there and then save this one here as number four Probably not best to save it with a lot of subdivision. Alright, now we can hide and show what we got here. We got the threads. And it's showing the base here. Let's go ahead and get a copy of that base there. Control C, Control V that. We're going to be using that here a little bit and we're going to freeze that. And we're going to turn these back on. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and select one of these. Control A would have select both of them. And I'm going to scale this out just a little bit so they both move at once. And I'm going to go into a front view perspective or the orthographic view. I'm sorry. And we're going to select the uh, the edges here, and we're going to do one side at a time. But since we got both of these items selected, the cemetery will not work. So we'll select here. Activate the transparency here. Just tip this just a little bit and we'll scale this in. Do the same for the other side. Now we're starting to take shape. 
it, but you can see that we have got a hole through the whole thing. So let's turn this on. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to um, this. I want there we go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, control A this. And I want to select the edges on this side to side, and we're going to loop it, and we're going to bridge it. Same way for this side. We'll loop it. So let's turn this back on and see what we got. Now it's starting to take a lot of shape as a tire here. And let's go ahead and uh, save this one as number five. Alright, there's going to be a little tweaking at the end here. Um, some things, sometimes things don't work out like you expect it to. And I can see down here that uh, some of these ribs from the thread are coming through. And uh, that probably happened when I was doing uniform scaling. Then I turned around and moved it at the same time. So I probably automatically threw the symmetry out of whack too. So I'll just do some self adjustment. Hold the control key and we'll just kind of bring that in just a little bit. And we'll do that again. And one more time. And now you can see it's starting to look like a tire. Like I said, I'm just going to do one side here. And we can also, um, let's go ahead and um, lock that there. We can also set the uh, clone one up here so we can see this one here. And remember, whatever I do to this one here will affect the tire over here. So if I was to select an edge and pull on the edge, as you can see it update there. Control Z that. And we're going to go ahead and select the tire again. Hold the shift key. Subdivide it to, to number two. I don't know what it is, but the program's not showing it at number two right now. So probably just a little program error there. And there's that tire there. I'm going to go ahead and save this one. Hold the shift key. Set this back to zero. Save is number six. And there's your tire, and thank you very much.